In our next exercise, we're going to work with geometry uh, because we've learned with photography that sometimes strong geometry will uh, make a picture look better. So uh, we'll switch to paint, and we're going to use the circle drawing tool and draw a circle. Only this circle needs to be perfectly round, not an ellipse, but a circle. And to do that, we can hold a shift key to create our circle. So with our first circle being a, a true circle, I can uh, right click on it and copy it. Well, I think I need to click away. That'll flatten it, which sticks it to the screen. Now I can use the select tool, select it, and copy it. I can also press Control V or click this icon up in the upper left hand corner to copy it. If I go to paste this, we're going to see a small problem, but there is a solution. If I paste this, it's going to keep the white around it and create this this illusion of a square. See that problem right there? The solution of that is for us to click on um, the select tool, the, the list box below it, that little triangle pointing down, and click on transparent selection. That feature, that function, says that whatever color 2 is, to ignore that color. So now there is no white. Okay. So we'll take that color and we'll put it exactly or side by side and not not just barely touching but rather we want them to be integrated and share that same line in the center. I'm going to paste it two more times. Once here and I'm going to run this one right through the center and paste it once more and put this one right on top sharing the lines. So I've made a geometric pattern. And I'll paste another one and we'll place it through the center only we want to center it so that it crosses all of, through the center and these lines for each of the four corners. So in this geometry, as we finish this, we can see that we're making somewhat what looks like a little flower inside. And that's um, something that we're going to consider and look at again in a future work, where this flower will be our goal, and this will be one of the methods to get it. Now we can fill these with colors. Um, you can use uh, a particular hue. I think I'll go into the purple pinks. And I'll click OK, paint bucket. And I'll start from the inside and work out. The tip of the drip pours the paint. That's how you can get in the center of these. If you find that you just can't uh, help but hit the lines, you can zoom in and have more control, more accuracy. Uh, but it's still true, the tip of the, zip, uh, tip of the drip pours the paint. OK, let's resume our work with another hue, another color. I'll go something lighter, click OK, paint bucket. Another color, another shade lighter. And though it's not necessary for this exercise to fill in the colors, it is somewhat satisfying. So we'll continue that. Now I could, I suppose, cut away this last loop and just call this a, a flower. But I'm going to do the last color. Now, there's one part that didn't get colored. Um, I must have missed it. So I'll click on this magnifier. And if I center my mouse over what I want, it'll keep, keep zooming in until it can zoom in no more, which is right about there. And now I can switch over to pencil. I'll choose that first color that I used, the darkest color for the center. And these are the individual pixels in paint. I'm going to switch color number two to black because I've made a mistake. And I can right click, use the right mouse, and color any individual pixel with that right mouse button there. So I think I'm set. I'll zoom back out. But we have more puzzles we can do, or more more complex designs we can do by adding circles and more geometry. But this is all we're going to do with this circle. Okay, next we use a circle drawing tool. Only well, this time we're going to draw 
uh, a happy little flower. I'd like you to set up the colors. Color number one to be orange and color number two to be yellow. Now when we do this, um, we can also set the fill to have a solid color. What that means is when we draw a circle, it'll automatically fill the circle with color. And that's our goal. So in these circles, we're going to do freehand. That is, we're going to choose the size to be freehand. We're not going to use the space bar or the, the shift key. So I've drawn one circle. Then I want you to draw another circle that overlaps it at an angle about the same size and another one so that you make a circle of circles. Once this circle of circles completed then use the other mouse button to draw the last circle and then we have what looks like a pansy. You can switch colors. I'm going to change my primary color to be one of these purples that I used in the secondary or color number two to be one of the lighter shades of the same color and I'll draw another flower. And again, to end it, I'll use the other mouse button and draw. So you see I've added some more patterns here. And in doing so, what I've done is I've watched carefully as I made each of these flower petals. By looking at the space, the shape, the size, the volume, I'm able to make micro adjustments using the arrow keys. I hope you enjoyed this one. And next, we'll look at creating flowers with a curve line tool.